Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel. So on today's video, I'm basically doing a pediatric occupational therapy a day in the life vlog. So um, this is the first video I've done in a few months. The last video I did was about me passing the board. So now a few months later, a little bit more than a few months, but I am now practicing as a pediatric occupational therapy here in Atlanta. So I kind of wanted just to show you guys a day in the life. Really it was supposed to be a week in the life, but it ended up being like two days. So I just kind of wanted to show you guys like what I do, different interventions that I do and things like that. I'll explain that a little bit more in the video, but I wanted to do an introduction to basically, I guess recap and um, let you guys know what occupational therapy is and then talk about what pediatric occupational therapy is. So there are a lot of people who don't know what I do, who don't know what occupational therapy is, let alone don't know what pediatric occupational therapy is. So before watching the video, I'm like, you know, there are people who watch my videos that aren't therapists, who aren't in healthcare, so they really don't know like what I'm talking about. So I kind of wanted to do a little overview about that before getting into the video so you can kind of understand it a little bit more. All right, so I'm gonna explain what occupational therapy is. So I'm gonna actually go off the definition from the framework, the occupational therapy practice framework. If you're an OT or if you're in school, you know what the framework is because you gotta memorize at home. Anyway, so within the OTPF4, which is the fourth edition, occupational therapy is defined as the therapeutic use of everyday life occupations with persons, groups, or populations for the purpose of enhancing or enabling participation. Occupational therapy practitioners use their knowledge of the transactional relationship among the client, the client's engagement and valuable occupations in the context to design occupation-based intervention plans. Occupational therapy services are provided for habilitation, rehabilitation, and the promotion of health and wellness for clients with disability and non-disability related needs. These services include acquisition and preservation of occupational identity for those clients who have or are at risk for developing developing an illness, injury, disease, disorder, condition, impairment, disability, activity limitation, or participation restriction. So pretty much all of that really means like we are working with clients to increase their independence regardless of what disability or illness that they may have. So for example, you have somebody who had a stroke. After their stroke, they were left with um, weakness in their whatever extremity was affected. They have developed poor fine motor skills. They're unable to um, put their clothes on because of their weakness in, on their left side. Um, they have aphasia. They may have all these deficits that have occurred because they have a stroke. As an occupational therapist, we wanna work with that client and we wanna work on whatever deficits that they have and see what they were doing beforehand, try to see what's important to them going or moving forward with their therapy to see what's important to them, what do they want to work on, what do they want to be able to do again, whether that's things around the house, whether that's something that has to do with their job, anything that they want to work on that um, allows them to be more independent in their life, that's what we do, that's our job pretty much. So we're basically trying to help people, regardless of whatever illness or disability that they have, become independent again. So that's what occupational therapy is in layman's terms. Now, once we talk about pediatric occupational therapy, it's basically the same thing. We are trying to, you know, we're trying to get these kids to become more independent in their daily activities, whether it's activities of daily living, whether it's leisure or play or whatever they are doing in their daily lives. We are trying to get those kids to be more independent, regardless of whatever illness or disability that they have. A lot of the times, you will see occupational therapists working with children who have autism. That's not the only diagnosis that you'll see occupational therapists working with, but I work with kids who have autism. So that is their illness or disability that they have that is impeding on their ability to be independent in their daily activities. So we look at, okay, what's stopping them from meeting these developmental milestones? Or what are the barriers that they have that is inhibiting them from being able to put their clothes on, brush their teeth independently, um, write, hand write, um, do, have legible handwriting for their age or things like that like we look at 
what is causing the problem first. So you'll probably see problems or deficits in their fine motor skills that's stopping them from being able to button clothes correctly or zip up zippers because they have poor fine motor skills or visual motor skills or hand-eye coordination or sensory problems that um, stops them from wanting to tolerate certain sensations like brush, like vibrating or brushing of their teeth or certain clothes or even textures of food. Those are all sensory needs. So as occupational therapists, we work to um, basically increase those skills so they are able to be more independent in their daily activities. I hope that made sense. I hope that makes sense. So when I'm at work, I do a lot of activities that are basically trying to refine those skills, like refine those fine motor skills, visual motor skills, sensory needs, and hand-eye coordination, things like that, because once those skills are refined, then they're able to carry over those skills that they learned. And since they have you know, better coordination and better skills, they're able to button that shirt or they're able to brush their teeth or they're able to put their shoes on and things like that, which increases their independence in their daily lives. So that's pretty much what I do as a pediatric occupational therapist. I work like two Saturdays out of the month in an inpatient rehab unit also here. And that's working with adults. And most of the time I'll see like motor vehicle accidents, strokes, um, you know, deconditioning, from like them having COVID or pneumonia or things like that. Or, you know, just random, just anything that you would see in a hospital, like that's what I see. And we still work on the basis of regaining their independence for their daily activities. So I kind of just wanted to give you guys that little summary before we go into a day in the life of me as a pediatric occupational therapist. So make sure that you like and subscribe and do all that good stuff before watching this video so i can get more content out there for y'all and yeah stay tuned for this video hey y'all um welcome back to my channel it has been a while since i have been on my channel the last video i did i think it was about like how to pass the boards and if you haven't watched the video you need to make sure you watch the video because it has a lot of great tips and tricks on how to pass the mbcot exam but anyways this has been um, a few months since then, so now I'm actually working in my field. I'm a pediatric occupational therapist, and I want to kind of give you all a week in my life, show you guys what I do as a pediatric occupational therapist, and give you, you know, different intervention ideas, and just show you, like, how a week in the life of a pediatric OT is. So make sure you stay tuned. So right now I'm on the way to work. I usually try to get there about nine o'clock. I don't have my first patient until 9.30. So about to head to work. I think I have about um, six, five or six kids today. So I'm not gonna ever show the kids because I'm not trying to go to jail. I'm not trying to lose my job for y'all. But I will show you guys different interventions that I do for different um, deficits that I may see or different issues that I may see with the kids. And yeah, you never know what you're gonna see or what you're going to deal with. I love it, it is great, so stay tuned. All right, so I'm gonna give you guys a little tour. This is the big space that me and um, the speech um, pathologists share speech and language pathologists SLP so there's an SLP in that room and then I have my room or my office um, excuse this because I'm doing like a detox so we're not gonna talk about that so here's my office um, I still have to fix it up I right there um, it was a quote or whatever the letters keep falling so we're not gonna talk about that but it's um from up <laughs> so this is my office uh, so this is my filing cabinet every time i do an evaluation like i keep um records in there and then i have like worksheets and stuff in the other one then i have like all my evals like that we use in here so use the berry and nub these are unused so there are no names on here so this is the beery. I use the beery um, depending on the age. I don't use that a lot, but I have used it like twice um, depending on the age and their abilities. 
Um, so this is just another part of the beery. Then we have the reel right here. So this is just like the questionnaire that you take on for parents. Um, I'm sorry. If you're a student, you'll learn this or you'll see this. Um, but if in if you work in Pete's and you should know what this is. I'm sorry. Then we have the Peabody. I actually just ran out of Peabody, but this is like the developmental um, chart that comes with all um, your Peabody. So you have like a whole chart to kind of reference um, if you need to try to see where um, your patient should be developmentally. And then um, this is like the score sheet for. Um, I hate this autofocus. This is a score sheet for the Peabody. Um, this is the box that the Peabody comes in right here. Also, these are my quotes. So I'm trying to get this office together. I don't really know what to do with it. So um, this is the desk where the um, patients will be most of the time for my session. They can be in here or we can go out here and do some things. So we have the easel. Um, over there as you can see the focuses have that over there um, so usually I like to come in here all right so this is my desk well not desk this is my cubby where I have like all of the different toys that I have so the, oh this is my, my cleaning supplies um, which I actually need to move, but the kids never get into it. So we have a bunch of different um, toys and different things that I use in here. And I'm definitely going to, you know, show you all that on some other days, like different things that I do with each one. I have like a sensory bin. I have a kit to help learn um, how to tolerate tooth brushing or just learn the act of um, brushing teeth, alphabet cards, um, squigs, bubbles, puzzles, bee tree. Um, and I'll explain like what I do with those. I have the um, dressing boards right here. So tying, buckles, snaps, and zippers. Right there, I have some tweezers. I have a lot of stuff in there. I have a kit um, that you can work on to help them learn self-feeding. Um, I have a bunch of stuff in here. A bunch of stuff in here. And it's growing and growing and growing. I also have another cabinet where I have a whole bunch of other things in here. But like I said, we'll kind of go over that um, throughout the week. And also under my desk, I have, <laughs> excuse that, that's trash. But I have um, puzzles. I have like the little pegboards in there, crayons, um, more puzzles in there, and just like a whole bunch of stuff. The aftermath of an evaluation. Literally a hot mess. So this looks much better, much better, much better, much better, much better. So this looks very, very bootleg, but pretty much you get some colored pipe cleaners. We have pink, green, yellow, and you have blue. Then you get some beads that are, you know, like the same colors that you have. Let's do some focus on here. So you have yellow beads, you have pink beads, we'll have green beads, and then we have some blue beads. So you will you know, like mix all the beads together and you'll get them to put the beads on the right color. So, ooh, sorry. <laughs> so this works on in-hand manipulation skills, this works on fine motor skills, it works on pincer grasp, um, identifying colors, um, matching, works on a lot of different things. Works on being able to thread, so like I said, in-hand manipulation, and they will put it through there and thread. Put it on here and thread. Put it on here and thread. Some kids will have problems like with the color matching. Some kids may have problems with the pincer grass. You may see challenges with 
um, just different skills needed for this task. So you can grade it up or you can grade it down. And this is Play-Doh. So, yeah. Okay, now we have our Dara Putty. Okay, so what I do with this, and I always disinfect this Dara Putty. Like, I need more, but I definitely always disinfect it um, between the uses. So, another good strengthening activity is also good for um, using those in hand manipulation skills and fine motor skills. What you do, you get some quarters. All these are disinfected, by the way. You get them, put it in the putty, hide it. Hide it. I'm not going to do all of them because it's just a demonstration. Okay? And you get them to pull the putty apart and search for the coin. So, I'm going to pull the putty apart. Pull the putty apart. I actually lost it for real. Okay. And they find it. They have to pull it out. And there is a slit in the top of the Play-Doh. So they'll get the coin and insert it in there. Works on a lot of different things. Strengthening. Um, she honestly visual motor. Fine motor. All that stuff. So yeah. This right here is a honeybee tree. So disregard the bees like we really don't play with the bee I mean the bees because the whole point of this I saw this I'm gonna credit everybody that I got these um, interventions from but this is really good pincer grasp fine motor skills so you get these alligator tweezers all right let's focus get these alligator tweezers you're gonna get the leaves and pull it out get them to use the tweezers to pull out these are some dressing boards from little chubby one they don't have a lot of give so i will say i probably will get some other ones but the snaps and the zips work um, of course the laces and the ties work but I really haven't used these because these are kind of advanced and my kids are kind of younger. So these are dressing boards. You can practice zipping, of course, initiating the zipper. Of course, ah, see, it's kind of hard for me. So I really kind of want some more. These, this is fine. The snaps. Snaps, snap, snap, snap. Buckles. I don't really use these. And then the button. So I kind of had to modify this and kind of cut it so it could give a little more because it was becoming a little bit difficult. Um, I also have one with larger buttons. Um, so yeah, those are those. I have this wooded block puzzle. And this puzzle I like a little better than all the other puzzles because, you know, not only are you working on like visual motor skills you have you have to do a lot of like rotation with your hands to get it in the right spot so like for this one like a lot of them they'll identify that it goes in this one but because it's long ways they try to do it like this and so they have to work on rotating to get it in there so like same for this one like they know oh it's a triangle they try to put it in like this they have to actually like rotate it to get it inside so i really like fast forward for this whole week because i've been busy so today is friday and usually on fridays i wear this shirt i'm honestly not supposed to but whatever so i wear my own like pediatric ot shirt and we can wear jeans on fridays if you want to so i'm gonna wear jeans today so yeah this is the end of my week i had a lot of cancellations this week because a lot of kids were out but i still did a pretty good amount of treatments and 
POCs and all that stuff like that or whatever. So I'm gonna walk you through my Friday. So today I had, <clears throat> so today I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people, but it ended up only being one, two, three, four people. I'm not saying that's a good thing, I'm not saying that's a good thing, but I had some absences, so I didn't have to see everybody. And I had one eval today, and I was supposed to have another eval today, but I ended up not having that eval because they were also absent. So yeah. It is very rare that I come and like, I'll have everybody be here. That is very, very rare because people get sick, things happen. It's never like, oh, I know what I'm gonna see that day. Cause like people can be here, people cannot be here. But that's like any like setting probably more than likely. So what I normally do, like after I have a session, I will do, try to do point of service notes but that does not happen all the time and today that was not happening so i'm doing all my notes now i have no more people it's like four o'clock now i want to be gone by 4 30 because i gotta go to get my nose done but yeah i usually do point of service notes meaning like like last five minutes i'll do notes or whatever but yeah i'm finishing those now. 